What does the word relationship mean to you? Harder question than it seems, right? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a relationship as the way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected, or the state of being connected. But I feel it is so much more than that. They are the bonds that hold people together. They are the things that interconnect people all around the world. When I think about relationships, I think about my family, my friends, my roommates, my classmates, and my coworkers. I think about past romantic relationships and relationships that have ended for different reasons. Some I trust more than others, some I interact with more than others, and some I love and care about more than others. My relationships are all in different places, and they even happen at different times. Today I will explain to you three different categories of relationships and the different stages that they may undergo. These stages include the coming together of the relationship and the falling apart. Now let's start with the basics. In order to understand a relationship, we must first understand the three different categories of relationships. The first one is a short duration relationship. Now this is the most fragile type of relationship because it only lasts a few seconds or a few minutes. So there is very limited time for communication. This could be a car salesperson, a pizza delivery man, or other short relationships that you may come across in your life. These types of relationships are very brief and superficial. They have less stress coming along with them, less expectations. Some strategies for improving short duration relationships include being respectful, being positive, and remembering that the first impression is the most important impression you will make on this person. The next type of relationship is a medium duration relationship. These last a longer time, but not necessarily a lifetime. These include your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, etc. The most important thing to remember in a medium duration relationship is being open and honest. You have to be willing to change and you have to know your boundaries. The last type of relationship is a long duration relationship. These last the longest, some may even last a lifetime, but they are the most difficult to maintain. Communication is a central priority to making a lifelong relationship. This could be your spouse, your family member, or lifelong friends. Now technology has significantly helped increase the amount of long duration relationships. The modern communicator author Dan O'Neill states that in many ways personal mediated technology such as cell phone and email have assisted in the development and maintenance of long duration relationships. Yet face to face communication is the best strategy for repairing and enhancing a lifelong relationship. The most important strategies to remember in helping a lifelong relationship is to acknowledge your problems, show you care, choose words carefully, and listen. In the academic journal Communication Studies, Volume 57, Tracy Anderson and Dr. Emmer Somner said that computer mediated communication helps enhance a long duration relationship because of the sender's ability to carefully edit what they are sending. They often provide pro provides less stress than a face-to-face -face long duration relationship. On the board here shows a short duration relationship. This would be a car salesperson, as I said before. Another example of a medium duration relationship are neighbors, and a long duration relationship being two people getting married or your spouse. Now that we know the different categories of a relationship, we can begin to speak about Mark Knapp and Anita Vangelesti's two-part model that was created to demonstrate the stages that a relationship may undergo. As you may have guessed, we must obviously start with the coming together of two people. The book The Modern Communicator by Dan O'Neill and Adam Earnhardt states, in our relationship, we do not move in a linear fashion. In a linear fashion. We move back and forth between different stages. Although skipping stages may result in stress and anxiety and an early termination to the relationship. This is the example of Mark Knapp and Anita Vangelesti's two-part model. In this side would be the coming apart as the arrow goes up. In this side would be the coming apart. The first step in the relationship is initiating. This lasts only a few seconds or a few minutes. This would be a greeting or a brief conversation. Some relationships do not even make it past the initiating stage. 
the only the reasons for people not making it past this stage would be because people are unattractive or unappealing. The next step is experimenting. This is where you find similarities and differences. This is where you may bond over similarities or disconnect over differences. The third step is intensifying. This is where you start to label your relationship. You can, this would be a best friend, a boyfriend, or a girlfriend. This is also where nonverbal communication increases. This would be holding hands or hugging and using terms of endearment such as babe or sweetheart. This is where some may share personal stories or intimate feelings. This would then ultimately lead to integrating, which would be the merging together of a relationship, and this would be labeling it as a mature relationship. This often involves, in, they may become inseparable, and separation is very difficult. Relationship article, scholarly article, presented a study examining 100 people who were in the first three to four months of their relationship. It said that the people that shared the ideas, ideals and values had a higher quality of a relationship. So you see the importance of how the similarities and the same ideals and values affect a relationship. Now the fifth step and the last step in coming together is the bonding. This is like a lasting commitment or and it's symbolized in some way which would be getting married or a living arrangement, moving in with a best friend, becoming roommates. Now if a relationship makes it through the coming together stages of the model, the unfortunate falling apart may follow. Just as easy as it seems to get through the coming apart, it can be just as easy to come through the falling apart. The first step in the coming apart is differentiating. The differences are commonly highlighted, you become more independent, silence grows. Then comes the circumscribing. Communication severely decreases and silence is always almost evident. In the book, I'm Right, You're Wrong, Now What? by Jacqueline Morris and Dr. Paul L. Fair, they state, after identifying the relationship problem you have with your partner, and before you move on to make a request, you may want to allow the silence to grow. Doing so can give your partner time to consider your words and identify his or her feelings. So in some occasion, the silence is a good thing in a relationship. It is not a good thing when it leads to the separating of your lives. This would be the stagnating stage. This is when the relationship is no longer functional. There's awkward, stiff, and often forced communication, if any at all. This is where some people start to seek new relationships with other people. This leads to the avoiding stage of the coming apart of the relationship. This is where anger and hostility build up and you begin to ultimately avoid each other. I did an interview with the honors director here at YSU. Her name is Amy Constantino, and she has her master's degree in counseling. She divorced her husband. She said the silence grew and the communication was lost, which led to her divorcing her husband. She said, people develop outside relationships. If there is no commitment to work on the relationship, then it will never be fixed. My favorite quote that she said is, if you do not deposit anything in the relationship bank, then there is nothing to withdraw. This ultimately leads to the terminating of the relationship, which happened in hers as well. This is where the end of the relationship comes, and if there's any communication at all, it's through third-party communication, being friends, roommates, etc. As you can now see, there is a pattern to different types of relationships, and these patterns are defined through communication. Let me end by saying that a relationship is more than just a connection between two objects or two people or both. Today I have taught you just a few of the different types of relationships. Furthermore, I have explained the stages that these relationships may undergo as they unfold. Think about an important relationship in your life. Think about the various stages that these types of relationships have gone through. Where do you stand with relationships? Where would you be without the relationships in your life? They teach us communication skills, how to listen, how to understand. These are what relationships, these relationships define us. Think about where you would be without your relationships in your life. Thank you.